It definitely takes some time to make, but it's so worth it. Beef Wellington is the dish you make when you're looking to impress family and friends. It's that perfect balance of a tender interior with a flaky crust. We tested this recipe so many different ways to try and make it as foolproof as possible so that if this is your first time making it, you will knock it out of the park. We're gonna start with our duck cell. It's just a fancy name for a mixture of finely chopped mushrooms and shallots that have been cooked down. For a duck cell, you can use a variety of mushrooms. Baby bellas, which are also known as creminis, they're super savory and meaty, and shiitakes, which are rich and buttery, and trumpet mushrooms, because they're nutty and earthy. We really like this combo for the ultimate umami flavor. Now, this may be controversial, but we're using a food processor to finely dice our mushrooms. You could also do this by hand. It'll definitely give you more control over how fine your dice is, but it will just take you twice as long. So we like to pulse ours in short bursts to make sure we don't turn our mushrooms into a paste. The next thing we want to do is remove all the moisture from our mushrooms. Often, this is done on a stove top, but we found this means spending a lot of time standing around tending to the mushrooms. So instead, we found it's easier to place them on a large baking sheet and cook them in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit, stirring every 15 minutes until all of their moisture is completely gone. This usually takes about 45 minutes. If we don't get the moisture out now, we'll end up with a soggy pastry and nobody wants that. While the mushrooms are cooking, we can get started with our tenderloin. This cut of beef, when cooked just right, melts in your mouth. When we purchased our tenderloin, we asked for a center cut so that we get a nice, even shape. If you do order a whole tenderloin, you just wanna make sure to cut off the ends so that you have that beautiful center cut shape. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna truss this meat so that we can make sure to keep the shape even when we sear it. To truss it, we're gonna need some butcher's twine and some scissors. We'll measure the twine out six times the length of the tenderloin. Then wrap the twine around one end of the loin and tie a knot to secure the string. Then make a loop around your hand with the string and place it around the loin about one inch down from the first knot. Then just continue looping and placing the twine until you reach the end. Then tie the string together in a knot to lock it in place. And we'll season this guy with a generous amount of salt and pepper. And we mean be generous. Seasoning the meat is really gonna help us build delicious levels of flavor, so don't be afraid of how much salt we're using. In a cast iron pan, we're gonna heat up our vegetable oil over medium-high heat. So we're using a cast iron because it conducts heat well and it's a heavy bottom pan, so it'll help prevent the fat from burning. And we're gonna use vegetable oil for searing because of its high smoke point. If we use just butter, it would burn from the high heat. Don't worry, the butter's coming later. <laughs> Once the oil is shimmering, we're gonna sear the loin on all sides really quickly. It takes about a minute on each side. We really wanna be careful not to overcook the meat, so don't worry about it getting perfectly golden brown. Right now, we're really just trying to lock in the moisture. Cool, the sides are looking good, so we're gonna remove it from the heat and cut off the twine. Then we're gonna brush it right away with some mustard. You can really use any kind of mustard for this, but we really loved using like a spicy horseradish mustard. We're doing this just to add a touch of acidity. So make sure you do this while the meat is still hot so it absorbs the mustard and all of its flavor. Once it's completely covered, we'll let this chill for about an hour in the fridge. Don't skip this step. Cooling it down really helps it hold its shape. Now it's time to get back to our duck cell. So in the same cast iron pan we used to sear our meat, we'll bring the heat back up to medium low and add some butter. We could watch melting butter all day. Let's just do a vid on melting butter. Then we'll add in our shallots and our garlic, basically everything that's good. We're gonna let all of this cook until the shallots have caramelized. Now really take your time with this. We really want them to be soft and golden brown. Then we're gonna deglaze with a little bit of cognac. Deglazing is when you hit the pan with a liquid so that it really lifts all of those delicious brown bits from the bottom of the pan. After the alcohol has cooked off, we'll stir in our mushrooms. Moisture is our enemy in this dish, so make sure the liquid has really reduced. It's smelling so good in here right now. Like that walk in the door and wanna know what's cooking good. So once all of that's combined, we'll remove it from the heat and place it in a bowl, cover it with plastic. Just really make sure you press the plastic down against the mushrooms. And then we're gonna let it chill in the fridge for about 45 minutes. Dude, we're halfway there. <laughs> This next part not only makes the beef wellington taste crazy delicious, but it works as a moisture barrier between the beef and the puff pastry, and it helps to prevent any gaps in your final product. 
Then we're gonna evenly spread out the mushrooms on top, making sure to leave a little border around the edges. And we're gonna press them down to make a compact flat layer. So we'll gently place the tenderloin at the bottom third of the rectangle. And we're gonna use the plastic wrap to really help roll the prosciutto and the mushrooms around the tenderloin. It's super helpful to hold the ends of the plastic wrap and just roll the log to get a tight seal. Now we're gonna place this back in the fridge for about an hour. I know, we're back in the fridge. We're gonna do this a few times, but really it's gonna ultimately help our presentation in the end for that perfectly round beef wellington shape. Just when the meat is all the way chilled, we're gonna take a sheet of puff pastry and roll it out until it's large enough to cover our entire log. Make sure your puff pastry is completely thawed before you're rolling it. If it's too warm and tacky, it will stick and rip as you roll it out. And if it's too cold, it'll crack. So you really just gotta find that nice middle ground. And then we're gonna brush the top third of the puff pastry with a beaten egg. Now we're gonna place the tenderloin on the bottom third, roll it up into a tight log. It's kinda like wrapping a present. Be gentle and take your time. And then fold the sides of the pastry and press under the log. Then we're gonna set it on a large sheet of plastic wrap and we'll roll it up real tight. Again, using that rolling method to really help us get that round shape. You guessed it, this guy's going back in the fridge while we preheat our oven to 425 degrees. We're so close, so just hang in there. Now it's time for the fun part, decorating. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna brush our entire Wellington with some egg wash. And this next part is totally customizable and really whatever you feel most comfortable with. Some people use a special tool to get that perfect lattice design, and others just use a knife to score the pastry. We're using strips of puff pastry to make our own lattice, and it gets a little fussy, but just take your time, make a beautiful design, don't stress it. And for funsies, we've cut out some fall shapes, like these leaves, and you can just place them wherever, just have fun with it. We finished our work of art. Look at her, she's beautiful. And now it's time to bake. Now we're gonna throw it in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes. It's really tough to tell when the beef is perfectly cooked. If you're looking for that medium rare finish, you know that it's done when the internal temperature is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. Like any steak, we wanna make sure to let it rest before we slice it. Guys, we did it. We got here and now it's finally time to eat. Serve this guy with some of your favorite sides. Cut yourself a slice and enjoy all of your hard work and all the compliments from your friends and family. If you like this recipe, you can find it and many more on tasty.co. Oh, what's the beef? You can hardly believe it. Oh, no, 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 no. I don't <laughs> think that's it. I don't think that's it. <laughs>